What's the secret to living a longer life? Consider this. Scientists are now researching the way bees think. Yes, the way bees think. And altering the lifespan of microscopic worms in search of groundbreaking answers. What has happened in the last 20 years is really a, a, a dramatic breakthrough in our understanding that lifespan itself is, is quite changeable. But before we get to the science, some essential life lessons from people who've already cruised into old age. My name is Ellsworth Wareham, and I was born October 3, 1914. We'll do the math for you. That makes Dr. Wareham 97 years old. He performed his last operation as a heart surgeon just three years ago. What's his recipe for longevity? I think one of the important things is a plant-based diet, which is another way of saying that you're a vegetarian. Becky Beck's another super senior. She misses neither a beat nor a stitch. I'm 98 years old, and I, I've been quilting now for about 70 years, I guess. And what's her secret? I don't drink coffee. I don't drink tea. And if you want to catch up with 101-year-old Herb Weil, meet him at the gym. The body is the temple of the Spirit of God, and we're told in the scriptures to keep our bodies healthy and well. If you have a health of body, you generally have a health of mind. They go well together. Herb Weil, Ellsworth Wareham, and Becky Beck all live in Loma Linda, California, and they're all Seventh-day Adventist, a Protestant denomination that emphasizes physical health as a vital pathway to spiritual health. Dr. Gary Fraser conducted a survey comparing lifestyles of Adventists to non-Adventists. The life expectancy of Adventists were, was greater than their non-Adventist neighbors. And for instance, the, the men were living about seven years longer and the women about four and a half years longer than their non-Adventist neighbors. And how come? We believe that there's about four or five different factors that we were able to identify. Being a vegetarian seemed to help. Uh, being careful about your body weight, not being too thin or not being overweight. Uh, interestingly, people who ate nuts four or five times a week, just small amounts every day, seemed to benefit. People who had never been a smoker. And the last one was being careful with your physical activity and being uh, sure that you exercised vigorously three or four times a week. But before you rush out and become a vegetarian or a Seventh-day Adventist, there's another critical element that helps determine how long you'll live. Genetics. These supercentenarians living to 100 and over are subjects of a study by Dr. Nir Barzilai, director of the Longevity Genes Project at Albert Einstein College of Medicine in New York City. What's remarkable about these folks, all Eastern European Ashkenazi Jews, is that while their lifestyles may not have been the healthiest, that just doesn't seem to matter. As a group, they've been uh, overweight, they've been smoking, you know, almost 50% of them were smoking, and very few have been exercising in any moderate way. So the point is that they, because they have those genes that protect them, did not have to interact with the environment the way you and I should. Dr. Barzilai is in the vanguard of a growing army of researchers working to get a handle on how and why we age. The fact is, advances in healthcare and pharmaceuticals are already extending lives. In 2010, there were more than 70,000 centenarians in the U.S., people living to 100 and beyond. But glance ahead to 2050, and the projected number soars to 4.2 million. And strides in research could boost that figure and better the odds for all of us. The aging field has just exploded. It's really incredible what's been achieved in, in basic labs like this with worms and flies and yeast cells. Gordon Lithgow is a molecular biologist at the Buck Institute for Research on Aging in Marin County near San Francisco. These clumps of shiny green proteins here are proteins that are becoming damaged during normal aging and clumping together. And this is a process that we are trying to stop. It turns out that we can change the rate of aging quite simply in, in simple animals, which is really incredible. 
By understanding and manipulating genes, Lithgow is learning to design therapies that treat age-related diseases in humans. I think we should be thinking about the diseases of aging in the way that we now think about the childhood diseases that, that we grew up with. Your sense is that someday we may think about Alzheimer's or Parkinson's the way I think of measles or bumps. I think we will think of them as diseases that still occur, that we have to take precautions against. But a healthy older body needs a healthy mind. And that's where the bees we mentioned earlier come in. It turns out they have the same kind of brain cells as humans, though far fewer of them. Arizona State University researcher Gru Amden plays a mind game that works like this. The bees get a whiff of a distinctive odor, followed by a taste of sugar water. Sugar is like a chocolate cake for, for bees, and the bee will respond to that by sticking out her, her tongues. Amden determines just how quickly the bee figures out that a whiff of the scent means a treat is on the way. The older the bee, the slower the learning curve. But that can be reversed. Changing the bee's lifestyle can lead to restoring a more youthful brain. For the proof, head to the hive. You're a natural. The word would be terrified of bees. <laughs> terrified I think. of bees. There you go. The average lifespan of a bee is about 30 days. But in that time, they can give us a fountain of youthful knowledge. Their first task as adults is taking care of the eggs laid by the queen. They all work together. As they age, they become so-called foragers, leaving the hive to find nourishment for the eggs. Now, alone as single bees, their brain changes. Because after a while as a forager, the bee brain actually deteriorates, much like you see in people with dementia. But force the bees back in time by returning them to the hive, and their brains snap back. They can better remember new things again, an ability that was lost to them as their brain aged when they were foragers. The key here is that bees are social beings and have a tough time coping with the stress of foraging alone. A bee deals very poorly with loneliness. If you isolate a bee, she would usually not survive more than about a week or 10 days. How does this help me? It helps you because it shows that a social intervention can trigger proteins that can heal your brain. Changing your social life is something you can do today. What do I do? You should get married. It's remarkable to see, even in experiments in worms and flies, that we're beginning to understand that stress is a major factor. And I think what socialization does is it alleviates stress. It provides support in a community. So as we learn from the worms and the bees, perhaps someday soon scientists will eradicate some age-related diseases. But for right now, the science seems clear that we need to stay socially connected and watch out for stress. By making the right choices about diet and exercise, it's possible we might add years to our lives. Can you imagine children and grandchildren with another 10 years of healthy lifespan for grandparents? That's a wonderful thing. It's something we really should be going after. And it's something that the science is telling us is absolutely possible. How close? In terms of the choices we make, we can do this today.